Hello and welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about four bar linkages, a very common mechanism. Windshield wipers are one great example of a real life four bar linkage. So if you ever wondered how windshield wipers work, it's because there's a four bar linkage under the hood of the car. What is a four bar linkage? A four bar linkage is the simplest movable four chain linkage. It has four bodies, which are typically referred to as bars or links, connected in a loop system by four joints. Now the fun comes if you change the length of individual bars, this can drastically change the behavior of the system. The picture shown is an example of a four bar linkage. Now let's assume the A to D link, so the one on the left, would be the one that has a motor attached to it, driving the system. So A to D would rotate and it would cause everything else to move in a certain way, all based on the bar's length. By making the D to C bar a triangle, you can get some interesting properties. C point E, that circle, well, the circular shape drawn, represents the movement that point E goes through as the four bar linkage is activated. So it traces a very interesting path. Four bar linkages have their own anatomy. All the links, all the bars, they have names. You have the ground link, which connects two anchor points to each other. That's represented by the Q line in that image. And you need anchor points for your four bar linkage. It's a moving object that has to be held down to something or you're not gonna get a lot of control. You have an input link, which is the one generally driven by a motor. That's represented by S in the image. You have the output link, the link that has the desired final motion. So when mechanical engineers or any other type of engineer designs a four bar linkage in a system, they want some sort of desired motion. So the P line, the P link, is gonna give that desired motion. The link that connects the input and output link is known as the floating link or the coupler. And I think coupler is a more common term in mechanics. You hear it a lot of times when you're getting your car repaired or something of that nature. It's represented in the image with the L. So now that we know the main types of bars on a four bar linkage, what happens when you vary them? You get all sorts of different motions, but really there are categories that all the variations can be put into. So there are two main types of motion when talking about four bar linkages. You have a complete rotating motion, that's called a crank rod, or you have a reciprocating motion at less than 360 degrees. This is called a rocker rod. It rocks back and forth. It doesn't complete a full rotation. So by varying the bar lengths, we can get unique patterns of motion. For example, one point could crank and the other could rock, as well as many other variations. Let's look at some of the examples on the bottom of this slide. On the first one on the bottom left, you can see that both points along the P-link will do full revolutions. That's pretty interesting. So it looks like lines Q and L, so the input and output links will both do full rotations. Moving to the right, the next image, it looks like the input link will do a full rotation, but the output link will rock back and forth, but with a pretty wide arc. In the next image, it's called a double rocker, so it looks like both the input and output link will rock back and forth. And that makes sense. Look how tiny the coupler is in that example. So really try to imagine these moving. And I would honestly recommend Googling four bar linkages. There's some great sites, although copyrighted, that show videos of these linkages moving. In the last image, both the input and output linkage do full rotations and the coupler between them would stay pretty static. It would move, but it would stay rigid. There is something called the Grasshoff condition. If the sum of the shortest and longest link of a planar quadrilateral linkage is less than or equal to the sum of the remaining two links, then the shortest link can rotate fully with respect to a neighboring link. So again, yes, there's all these crazy variations, but engineers over the years have figured out certain rules and groupings for four bar linkages. So if the shortest and the longest linkages are less than or equal to the other two, then S being the shortest link can do a full rotation. There is a table there, I won't go into the details about that kind of groups the categories of what the input and output links
this will do. If you were wondering what each of the T's mean, the T's are just groupings of certain links. So they put two links together and they see what the respective size is compared to the other two. They put a different two together and continue the process. But eventually you get a table that kind of defines all possible combinations. And a lot of good mechanical or design engineers would probably know a lot of this offhand. So whether they want the input link to be a crank and the output link to also be a crank, or if they want the input to be a crank and the output to be a rocker, this table kind of begins to give an idea of what the respective ratio should be between one link and another. But it's not just the general motions that are important. It's also the actual measurements and the time it takes for these things to occur. So four bar mechanisms have two strokes, a forward stroke and a return stroke. Together, they complete one cycle. So the Q ratio is the time of the slower stroke over the time of the quicker stroke, and that has to be greater than or equal to one. One type of four bar linkage that I find super fascinating is the slider crank, which is three revolution joints and one slider joint. So you guessed it, a slider joint slides, moves back and forth. So there's two types. There's inline, which is the one pictured below, it is symmetrical, so the line of travel for the slider passes through the center of the crank base joint. Then you have offset. So this will be when the crank and slider joint are not on the same axis. This causes the slider to move quicker in one direction than the other. This is called a quick return mechanism. One example of a slider crank in real life is a piston, which is kind of the stereotypical mechanical thing a lot of people think of when they think mechanics. So on the bottom, it shows the slider crank extended and retracted. So you can imagine the base, the circular parts, moving around and around and around. And that would pull the slider back and forth and back and forth at the same speed. Now, if those were offset from each other, no matter what the angle, even one degree, the slider crank would move quicker in one direction than the other. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a basic understanding of four bar linkages what they do, how they function, and their anatomy. There's a lot of math you can do with them, but if you understand the basic concepts, you can get through the math pretty easily. If you liked the video, please subscribe to Beginning Engineers. I'll be doing a variety of engineering topic videos throughout the summer of 2016 with a focus on process and quality engineering. Have a great day!